And if God does not exist, frankly, if nothing above me exists, that doesn't imply that I have nothing to live for. Right. That, yeah, and I do definitely have things to live for that right. I can specifically point to that have nothing to do with whether there's a God. Right. This atheist brings up amazing questions about doubt to Cliff. So make sure to watch till the end so you know how to answer these questions. And I have a Bible verse that will tie all of this together. Let's get right into the video. Well, I was hesitant to stand up anyway, but I would actually like to ask two questions. And they're coming from my heart. Okay. Okay. Um, as someone who has been raised outside of the church, and I just don't take the Bible as evidence, is there any way that I could be converted? Is that the only way that you can reach out to someone that doesn't have any kind of cultural upbringing, that hasn't been raised with already those doubts? How can you speak to someone who's absolutely legitimately an atheist? Please, I mean, please answer directly. I have many friends who are former atheists. And these people who are former atheists relax their mind, they tried to be as objective as possible, and to look at the evidence that God exists. And then once they move from atheism to theism, then they relax their mind, they try to be as objective as possible and read the Gospels, not as the Word of God, simply as accurate history, because the evidence is the Gospels give us some accurate history. And confronted by the lifestyle, teachings, death and resurrection of Christ, they saw the evidence is Christ is reliable and they chose to put their faith in Him. So you, you, you said that there were two steps there? The second step, once you've acknowledged that there could be some sort of right. all-knowing, all-powerful, all-good thing, right. um, the second, after, once you've done that, that's fine. It's that first step that I'm really concerned with. So you're saying that there's actually fact-based evidence that is best explained through an existence of God? Philosophical evidence, yes, sir. I'm not talking specifically about um, experiments or anything like that, but even, even philosophical evidence. Philosophical and you think, evidence. And you think that's the best, most rational explanation? Yes. Okay, so we, we have thousands of years of history of, dis of debates about these kind of things, and I don't want to revisit those, but do you have an answer for someone who's already gone through those and hasn't been convinced of the factual accu accuracy or of Occam's razor? I mean, if, there, if, if I honestly think that there are just more reliable descriptions that match the facts better, theory that just has fewer things that you have to assume that explain it just as well, if I'm in that position, Knowing that I am a limited person and could be wrong, is there room for faith? That was kind of a technical question. Would you like me to try to repeat it? Mm -hmm. So, is it? do you think that it's possible to both think that the best answer is atheism, that, that I can logically disprove the existence of the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-good, yet, through knowing my own limitation, through knowing that logic itself can be flawed, that our brains cannot understand everything. Is that enough of a doubt to admit the kind of faith that's required to believe in God? Sir, all you've got to do is look at the evidence for the reliability of Christ. Then you say, no, I'm sorry, not enough evidence. I can't believe. But when you say that, what you are clearly saying is, before I trust anything to be true, it must meet this level of evidence. So my two questions for you then are, in light of the fact that Jesus Christ is not supported by enough evidence, what is the object that you have chosen to trust in? And secondly, what is the preponderance of evidence that supports this option as being more reliable than Christ? They like to just think about, oh, Christianity doesn't have any evidence. It doesn't have enough evidence for me to believe in. So I'm going to do what? At the end of the day, you still decide something has more evidence that you want to believe in more than Jesus, whether that's atheism or just evolution or just we all evolved. So you decide to believe in that more. But is there really more evidence for that than God? The discussion isn't between two different things that, that explain the, the, the environment that we see, but it's a very specific proposition of either an all-knowing, all-powerful God exists or it doesn't. And I believe that the evidence supports the second. And I don't think that you need to, that, that that argument specifically requires there to be something else that you believe in. Just like I mean, you can talk about the non-existence of something. If it were, if it logically would impact your life in some way and it doesn't impact your life in that way, then it doesn't exist without positing something else instead.
Tonight, when you put your head on your pillow, tonight when I put my head on my pillow, like it or not, you are living for something or someone. Like it or not, I'm living for someone or something. You have said the reason that you cannot believe in Christ is because of a lack of evidence. No, I said an evidence against. That's a very important difference. All right, fine. Evidence against. Okay. So what I need to challenge you to do is explain to me what or who you are living for and why. What's all the evidence that points to whatever the option is you've chosen other than Christ? What's this overwhelming evidence that has convinced you that this option is more trustworthy than Christ? Well, we're talking about two different things here, um, and I, I'm going to, I'm trying to answer your question. This is the only way I know how. Um, I'm talking about whether something exists or not, and you brought in value. You brought in why, why are you living? What are you living for? You, you know, what, why are you good? Something like that. Like, what is your purpose? And the question that I was asking was very much about what exists, and if God does not exist, frankly, if nothing above me exists, that doesn't imply that I have nothing to live for. Right. That, yeah, and I do definitely have things to live for that right. I can specifically point to that have nothing to do with whether there's a God. Right. That's right. I know that. Okay. Then I, just I don't thought understand I just... why there's a connection there. For some reason, you and the two gentlemen before, I'm not sure that you guys respect language the way I do. How do you mean? I agree with those who say that language can just be a power move to assert your power. And that happens at times. But I'm convinced that if we take language seriously and if we listen to each other, we can have meaningful conversation. I thought I just said to you, tonight, when you put your head on your pillow, like it or not, you're going to have to acknowledge you're living for something or someone. Yes. Like it or not, when I put my head on my pillow tonight, I'm going to have to acknowledge I'm living for someone or something. I agree with that. We both have faith. Now, you have said to me crystal clearly that there is not enough evidence that God exists, and you didn't want to hear me go over that evidence, and I respect that. And you have also clearly said that there's not enough evidence that Jesus Christ is reliable. Fine, no problem. But when you say to me, the reason you can't believe that God exists, the reason you can't believe that Jesus Christ is the truth is because of lack of evidence, in order not to be an intellectual hypocrite, I'm asking you, what do you live for, and what's this preponderance of evidence that convinces you that this option is superior to God to Christ? I can we all live for something still. We all decide who we're going to live for. Either that's God, God of the Bible, God of other religions, or we live for ourselves. A lot of times that's what it is. We decide we just want to live for ourselves and do what's best and best in our interest. That seems to be the case. But we still have faith in something and we live for something no matter what. And that's what he's trying to get at. He's like, you see, it has nothing to do with if you don't have purpose or not. You're probably, your purpose is to live for yourself and do whatever makes you happy. I just didn't Please think do. it was relevant to the conversation. I, I, I believe in flourishing, in human flourishing, in eudaimonia. I believe that, that we have goodness in our lives, that there are good things to experience, good things to learn and be. I mean, it, it's, there, there is an inherent goodness to human life that has no relationship with anything higher than humanity. And once you acknowledge that there's something higher than humanity, it belittles us. I, I, I specifically, just so I don't get off topic, that what I live for is flourishing. Who so, defines flourishing? I do, for myself. Fine. And the KKK defines flourishing for themselves. That's fine. It's that doesn't fine? mean they're right. And the terrorists who bombed and shot people in Paris define flourishing for themselves. Yeah, but now you're you're making so you asked what I live for. You did not say, do I believe in some sort of absolute good? I yeah, but how do you know what is flourishing then? What is good? You live for your flourishing. So if you think that your flourishing is to go and do some terrible thing to someone, that doesn't mean it's good. That doesn't mean it's flourishing. Maybe to you, that's why you need a God to say there's an absolute good and evil. I did. I did not. I asked you. How do you define flourishing? Who defines flourishing? We each define flourishing. Okay. Now, if you think about it, you're going to realize you've thought it one way. Define flourishing one way. The terrorists have obviously defined it another way. Nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. It's all relative. 
I'm not talking about ethics. That's why I said this was outside of the realm of the conversation. This is Flourishing an does not question. include ethics? Excuse me? Flourishing does not include ethics? You asked what I live for. Yeah, flourishing, you said. Yeah, that's not an ethical statement. That's a psychological statement. Does that include statement. ethics? To flourish as a human being, does that include understanding what's good? I thought you used no, the word goodness. It includes goodness. It doesn't understand the, it, the, the un, it does not include the understanding of goodness. It my, includes goodness, my, but not the understanding of my goodness. My moral imperative is Language to is flourish. breaking down. No, my moral imperative is to flourish. My moral imperative is not, it, it, it does not include having some sort of ultimate goodness. I don't have that claim on reality. I, I, I just said earlier in my, my honest question, one that I've asked of priests in the past when I was really questioning, my honest question is, can, is faith compatible with, with this idea? That, that's, that's a very specific question, okay? With, with flourishing? With the fact that my logic is limited, I could be wrong. I know that I could be wrong. Whether you take that same idea and apply it to flourishing, yes, I am going to do my utmost to be a good person, but that does not mean that I know what good is. I don't lay any sort of claim to absolute goodness. Like it or not, you have to make a judgment call on what the terrorists did in Paris. They define that as flourishing, as their goodness. Now, you just can't live in a vacuum and say, well, it really doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. You have to make a judgment call. Is that right or wrong? You have to make a judgment call. Is the KKK right or wrong in denigrating black people and elevating Aryan supremacy? You can't just live in a vacuum and say, well, it, it's irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. It's real life. So who defines flourishing? And if you define it, then what makes your definition right and the KKK or the terrorist definition wrong? Dang, that is so good. And that's why we need God. That's why we need... Jesus, he's, he's, he's laid out the moral standards and how to live a life. Turn the other cheek, love your enemies. And all the great atheistic thinkers who had the intellectual honesty to acknowledge, if there is no God, there is no mind prior to the human mind. Which means it's obviously the human mind that defines justice and injustice, what it means to flourish or not flourish, what it means to live a good life or not to live a good life, it's all the creation of the human mind. It's a human fantasy. Those are my fantasy thing. is not superior to your fantasy. Your fantasy is not superior to my fantasy. It's all relative. And I'm saying, sir, I don't think you can live that way. I, I think agree. I could be wrong. I think you live as if the terrorist attacks in Paris, France were absolutely wrong. You see, you can't say that if you're going to hold to what you believe in, which is, there is no God, morality is relative. I define flourishing, I define goodness for myself. Fine. If what you say is true, if what you believe is true, then have the intellectual honesty to say, the terrorists define good, flourishing life their own way. They're not wrong, I'm not right. It's all in taste, it's a matter of taste. In case it's not obvious, I do think that atrocities are wrong. In case it's not obvious, I think that there are incredibly bad things happening in the world and that we have a personal responsibility to stand up and do something about it. I am sure you do. Our disagreement's I not about that. that. Our disagreement is about whether there's an intermediate ground, not even intermediate, putting it on a spectrum is false, but something that's neither absolutism nor relativism. And from, from a relatively Christian person, it's Immanuel Kant. He said that there is a transcendental mind, that people come together, not literally come together, but there is an understanding among humans of what is right and wrong. And it's not an individual person, but neither is it an absolute thing. There are other ways of looking at this besides this false dichotomy. So that, I, I think that maybe I'm getting a little too technical, but I mean, honestly, I wanted to ask the question about, given that I just don't see the evidence, but it is the knowledge of my own lack enough to admit faith. And it seems like what you're saying is, no, you have to admit the evidence. And what that means to me is that I can't have faith in it. So that's, that's my conclusion here. Unless, unless you <laughs> The thing that this man is missing is the whole point that he defines what good is. He defines what flourishing is. And that viewpoint is bad. It's not good. Because then when other people think the same way, their viewpoint of flourishing is totally different than yours. You can't say anything about it because of your viewpoint. I think he's just missing the idea how bad that viewpoint of flourishing is. 
the reason it's so frustrating to talk with you is because I don't think you listen to me very carefully. I'm sorry. I, I think I feel like I have been. I'm sorry if we're not. I said, sir, you have faith. I have faith. Don't you remember I talked about tonight? Both of us are going to put our heads on our pillows. <laughs> Sure, I went over it twice with you. Yes, but that's you're very not smart. Well, there's, my there's a problem. Yes, I am answering your question. Not with a yes, no answer. Not with a yes, no answer. I'm trying to point out to you that every atheist, every agnostic, every Muslim, Jew, Christian, we all have faith. What does that mean? It means that all of us have to deal with the basic fundamental questions. Why is a human being valuable? Is there a purpose to life? Why do I behave ethically the way I do? Is there life after death or is there not? None of us can scientifically prove that our answers to any of those four questions are absolutely true. Instead, they are philosophical questions that you have to use logic, experience, observation to answer. We all answer them, though. All of us have answers to the question. Is a human being worth anything, yes or no? Is there a purpose to life, yes or no? Is it right or wrong to bomb people in Paris and be part of the KKK, yes or no? Is there life after death or not, yes or no? We all have to struggle with those issues. You have no choice. Why? Because you have to live life. That's why. You all answer them. Now guess what? All of us have faith when we answer those questions. None of us can prove that our answers to any of those questions is right. So, sir, please don't walk away from here telling me or thinking that I didn't say you have faith. I know you have got faith. Same way I've got faith. You just have a different faith from me. That's all. An atheist has faith, just a different faith than I do. We all have faith, trusting that something is true, not because we can prove it, but hopefully because we've got evidence. And that's why I pressed you, sir, and said, what's your faith in, and what's the evidence that whatever it is that you believe in is reliable? So I've been straight as an arrow with you, you sir. I agree with everything you just said, honestly. Well, good. No, that, that's not, I, the problem is that that's not speaking to whether there's a God. And I'm specifically asking about that. No, you cut me off at the knees when it came to answering that. I'm sorry, how? You cut me off intellectually at the knees because I started to answer you and you said I don't want to go through all those arguments that have gone over the past 2,000 years over whether God exists or not. No, no, yeah, you're right. You cut me off at the knees intellectually so let's not act like oh yeah you come out here with an open mind inviting me to explain to you why I believe God exists. You no, that's did. not what I'm asking. It's you didn't. Not. You cut me right off. I'm not asking you to explain why you believe in God. I'm really not. I know you're I've not. I've been doing that for 20 years. Right. What, what I want to know is given that I've already decided that, I, that the evidence doesn't support it Am, is the question done? Is there further work to be done here? If I know that the best evidence supports that there's no God, is there further work? Should I still keep looking? Yeah. Simply because of the knowledge of my own imperfection. Yeah, you sure should. And I told you why. Because like it or not, you have to answer the question. Is human life valuable? If so, why? Well, I've answered those. It has nothing to do with God. Yeah, and you're up a creek without a paddle when it comes to explaining why human life has value if there is no God. Innate Ooh. intrinsic value. Yeah. If there is no God, I give my life value, you give your life value, or society gives your life value, but it's not innate and intrinsic. And which means if you happen to be value? born at the time of the Dred Scott decision and you happen to be a black person, tough luck. You are three-fifths the value of white folks, according to the U.S. Supreme Court. That's what society has decided. And my point is, I could give a rip about what society decides. Racism is absolutely wrong because human beings are created in the image of God. They have an intrinsic, innate value that is not determined by my opinion, your opinion, or the United States government's opinion. How is God giving us value more intrinsic than us giving ourselves value? Because if there is no God, your number came up in a Monte Carlo game, you are a freak accident of nature. You do not get value out of a freak accident. You get nothing. You get meaninglessness. Then you have to create your own value, but if you 
choose not to create the same value tomorrow that you did today, you're not wrong, you're not right, because it's all a crapshoot. God created you with intrinsic value. Before he formed you in the mother's womb, he gave you value. He loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. That's why believing in God is so important. When you don't say there is, when you say there is no God, essentially there is no value. I'm sorry, especially if you're an atheist. You... So now I have a Bible verse that will tie all of this together. <laughs> Jeremiah 1 5 says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. And appointed you as my prophet to the nations. So guys, I encourage you to go to Jesus. He loves you and he's longing to have a relationship with you. You have intrinsic value because he created you. No matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter your race, no matter what gender you are, you have intrinsic value. So go to him today because he loves you so much. Choose Jesus. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I know we can do it with your help. We just hit 7,000 over the weekend, and I know we can get 10,000, guys. So appreciate all the love and support you guys have given me over the past couple months. Uh, been loving it. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you so much for watching, and also you might like this video here. Peace.